In this video, we will be entering the Chernobyl exclusion zone. But firstly, let's go back 35 years. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. An official announcement from the Council of Ministers. There has been an accident at the Chernobyl atomic power station. The Soviets may have been fairly quick to acknowledge the accident because evidence in the form of mild nuclear radiation had already reached beyond the Soviet borders to Scandinavia. The civilian plant in question is in the Ukraine. It's near the city of Kiev, population 2.5 million, and about a thousand miles from Scandinavia, meaning that whatever did occur there, a radioactive cloud headed north across Poland today and into Denmark, where radiation levels were five times normal and Sweden illegally high. On April 26, 1986, at approximately 1.23 in the morning, a late night safety test that went horribly wrong in reactor four of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant caused catastrophic consequences. This is my second time to Chernobyl, but in this video series, we will be going deeper into the Chernobyl exclusion zone, exploring Pripyat, the abandoned city that used to inhabit 50,000 people, and even out to a remote village that used to have a population of 600 people, but now has a population of only one behind a wall of military and police checkpoints to access the exclusion zone it's almost like accessing another country multiple checkpoints passports and essentially visas are checked hospitals kindergartens high schools morgues churches all abandoned and all left as they were on that fateful day and remember the people of the Chernobyl exclusion zone only had a few hours to evacuate and they were told that they would be returning in a few days time but of course they never returned they were told to only bring the bare essentials. Many of their belongings are sitting exactly where they were left 35 years ago. Hello. Hello, sir. And the COVID test, please. Thank and you very enjoy much. your flight. Thanks. So welcome to the perimeter of the Chernobyl exclusion zone here. This is the border. We just drove a couple hours from Kiev this morning and now we're going to enter into the exclusion zone. We're just having our passports checked currently. Obviously strict security here. We're going to head to Pripyat, explore around the abandoned city of 50,000 people used to live there. Underneath this huge dome here, which is called the sarcophagus, is reactor 4 where the explosion took place. The sarcophagus cost $2.3 billion to build, and it should keep the radiation contained for 100 years, and then they'll have to replace it. The Russians confirmed that their operators placed the reactor in an unstable condition, and that the design placed too much responsibility on the operator's shoulders. The energy created was enough to throw a 1,000-ton concrete slab above the reactor to one side. Several fires broke out, the rest is history. If the RBMK design had been right in the first place, the accident wouldn't, indeed couldn't, have happened. Okay, so we've arrived at the final checkpoint just behind me. This is the only checkpoint that we're allowed to film. All the other ones are not allowed to film because it's military and police. But here we are, this is appropriate. This is right on the outskirts. We're about to go beyond the gates up here behind this fence, have a look around inside. Here we are, right in the center. Apartment buildings up here. I'm gonna take you for a bit of a walk now. Hotel over there, supermarket, swimming pool. You know, I have been here in the past, but it, it doesn't get any less profound, you know. So this building here, about to go into is the hospital. As you know, the, the hospital here was overloaded after the explosion for obvious reasons. Cool. And there's the hallway of the hospital of Pripyat. You can see where I'm walking here, look on the floor. So many medical supplies, bottles of medicine and smashed glass papers.
completely destroyed door, children's beds. You know, this place would have been absolutely overwhelmed after the explosion. And, you know, to be here 35 years later and, and just try and kind of picture what was going on here. Ultimately, it, it's a time machine, you know, to be here all this time later. Obviously, the condition of the place isn't as it once was by any stretch, but I mean, it still gives you quite the idea. These are obviously children's beds. So this might be the children's ward. I'm not too sure there's some high chairs for children. This is just dirt on the ground here. Child's toy on the bed. You can imagine once a, a child was in this room playing with his toy and then ultimately one day they were completely evacuated and his little toy was left behind because they were only allowed to bring the essentials and they thought they were coming back in four days time. Many things were left with the expectation that they were going to be returning. Chemist. Pills and different medicines here. Look, this medicine is still in there. Look. It's almost solidified, but pretty incredible that this is all just still here. Here is the hospital auditorium. You can see there's a piano there. Igor was telling me that this place was used for lectures, or his words actually were for brainwashing people. Maybe political speeches or propaganda. That's what Igor has said. It's very cold in these buildings. Literature, just hundreds of books on the floor here. Some still on the shelves, but most of them have been thrown onto the ground. So this paper here is from 20 days before the accident. It's come up to the I think, third or fourth floor now. Wow, absolutely insane. Here's the elevator shaft. So here's the gynecologist's chair here. We're just in this medical center. Notes all over the floor here. Gynecologist's chair here.
So we come upstairs in this medical centre here and there's impressions, moulds of people's teeth from, you know, 35 years ago. Canister. We're outside the supermarket now, and there's a hot spot, radiation hot spot on the ground here, right? Wow, it's almost 100. It will be even more now. It's over 100, 102. And so is that quite dangerous levels? If you leak it, yes. Okay. But if you stay one meter away, it doesn't hurt you. And if you were to lick it, what would be, what would happen ultimately? Skin cancer. Guaranteed? 101%. Right. K killing, of course. A joke. Okay. Those particles that release radiation now, somewhere in metal inside. They were, you see, they were melted by welding. Otherwise, they would wash off by rains and snow. So particles that give us radiation, not on surface, it's uh, melted inside. Or just maybe deep in rust. It is not easy to get them out by our thorn, I guess. Supermarket. Now you can see they used to sell here beer. Juices, uh, milk, uh, cheese. People were evacuated, but liquidators stood here, you know, they... To I, stop looting and things. Yeah, they were police, yeah, to yeah. stop looting. They got an order to bury the vodka, you know. But uh, what sense to bury the vodka? Uh, if they could bury it in the stomach, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Running track. Football field. So sitting in the stands here. Looking over what would have been the football pitch, apartment buildings. Top nuclear scientists, academician Valery Legasov, has since stated publicly that an accident like the one which happened at Chernobyl would not be possible at any other reactor in the world. The reactor had two fundamental design flaws, and these were of vital importance that day. So we've come across from the athletic stadium there, and we've come to this huge abandoned apartment building. There's a Bathtub. Gonna try and make it to the rooftop. Let's see. Mailboxes. This apartment building just seems to be completely gutted. There's an elevator here. Let's see if we can make it up to the top. There has been incidents of people getting injured in these buildings because obviously they're not at all maintained and uh, you know, they're falling apart. Here we are at the top floor. So there you can see reactor four. Pretty incredible. So when the explosion happened, people in this apartment would have seen the fire. And they would have been pretty close. I don't think you can see anything, but it's just pitch black in here. It's boarded shut, I can't get out onto the rooftop. Try another building. So as you can see, this building's completely gutted. So there's nothing really here. There's no old papers or anything of too much interest. So I'm gonna try and find a building that actually has some items that give the place a bit of atmosphere, you know? It's surreal here. You can imagine this was a city of 50,000 people. So, you know, it's hard to really get a grasp. There's endless apartment buildings like this, you know, to see. Some of them are gutted, but some of them actually have bits and pieces in them. Ukrainian authorities tried to hide the disaster, which had by that time claimed only two lives, when one employee was killed instantly and another died in hospital several hours later. Firefighters who rushed in to put out the blaze weren't properly equipped and suffered radiation poisoning. So this building that I'm going into now is actually the morgue of the hospital. Wow. Oh wow, this is that's crazy. I guess this is where the autopsies would happen. 
Put these little bottles here. Some test tubes. Oh, wow. It's bigger than I expected. Again, I keep saying it, but you really can't understand the, the scale of the city and just how many buildings you could go into that would have so many stories. Another, what I assume is an autopsy bed. Here's a newspaper. That's from 1976. So 10 years before the explosion, this paper. I mean, it's incredible how long printed papers last, to be honest. I mean, this is 45 years old. Perfectly readable. Camera film. Handwritten letters. The time capsule. Really incredible. What is that? Don't really want to assume what's in this. There's some boots. I really am lost for words. Wow, it's been a fire in here. Here's some gas mask filters. This one's unused, but I think somebody's tried to light this place on fire. This keeps happening. You're just about to leave the building and then you just come across something absolutely fascinating. I'm not sure if you can make out the bullet holes in this uh, spray painted silhouette here. So apparently the military used to come here. Uh, I don't think they do it anymore, but back in like 2017, the military would come here and they would do like city war training. So they would go around and, and do shooting exercises and sometimes maybe snipe from far off apartment buildings, roofs, and obviously shoot here. Got to be careful walking in the woods here, eh? So Igor was telling me that these animals inside the exclusion zone are not allowed to leave. It's not allowed to bring in cats and dogs, YouTubers, etc. <laughs> Kidding. It's allowed. It's okay to bring out dogs and cats, but not YouTubers. So this is a cafe behind me here, and it looks over this quite beautiful lake. Sorry, mate. Looks over this beautiful lake. This is where people would come on a nice Saturday, have a coffee and look over the view. So here we are at the movie theatre. Not only movies, uh, propaganda as well. They were obliged to watch 15 minutes propaganda footage before any movie. It was quite popular uh, uh, Indian movies, you know, Bollywood. Really? Yes. Dubbed in Russian or? Yes. Do you still watch Bollywood you, today? Uh, me? Yeah. Not, of course not. And you? <laughs> Movie theater is the entrance. Here's the cinema. I've got to be careful of my feet here. Floorboards are completely busted out. There's the cinema screen. Only a few chairs left. Well, this is where Igor used to watch his Bollywood movies. Not this one, obviously, but in Kiev, where he lived. It was not that bad in Soviet Union time, like in North Korea now. Of we course, were not yeah. that closed. Right. So you could uh, watch even Australian movies. Attempts were made to cool the reactor by dropping 4,000 tonnes of lead and sandbags onto the site. Investigations into the accident at Chernobyl revealed both procedural and design errors at the nuclear facility. So this building was used as the headquarters for the decontamination from 86 until when? Till 1999. All the topsoil here, 15 centimetres of the topsoil was removed and then refilled over and then another layer of concrete over all the concrete to decontaminate the whole place so it's actually reasonably safe to come here for short periods of time now 0.7 you know there are some countries they have natural standard up to up to 0.6 now 0.7 which okay. is not bad but as long as you are staying here as more chance you get some particle inside you know you cannot just stand in and just do nothing. You have to eat, you have to drink, right. you have to move, you have to sit, you know. This is the hotel here, right? Yeah, hotel. But you can uh, 
part of the roof is ready to fall apart. collapse. Collapse. Yeah. Yeah. After the accident, this hotel was in use as a ho headquarters of liquidation. The scene in the, the HBO series and they got the binoculars and then... Yes, that is right. Some of them will not stop firing for 50,000 years. That rooftop was in use as a watchtower for helicopter flying. And as somebody who, you know, you've obviously spent a lot of time here and you know a lot about the history, you grew up in this country. How did you feel about the series? Generally, it is a great, uh, amazing series. I recommend to everyone uh, to see it, you know. But uh, just remember, it is just drama. It is just movie. It's not, not documentary. My favorite uh, is uh, episode five, last episode, you know, when they explain the reason of the explosion you know so that part is is quite accurate you would yeah, say. yeah 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 quite accurate but i mean uh, of, of course uh, that trial uh, last uh, lasted two months not uh, 45 minutes join us in the next video where we visit the kindergarten and much more in Pripyat.